Welcome learners to this part 3 of heme metabolism where I discuss you the porphyrias. In part 1 I have discussed you all the biosynthetic aspect of heme biosynthesis and uh, part 2 I have talked about regulation of allosynthase 1 enzyme and this part 3 I will be talking to you about errors in this metabolic pathway which is uh, there in various porphyrias. So starting with the porphyria but before uh, discussion discussion of porphyria starts i would like you to brush up with the steps the first step uh, i told you the succinyl coenzyme glycine is forming uala by allosynthase uh, enzyme that is allosynthase 1 in liver and allosynthase 2 in bone marrow then we have allodehydratase enzyme which is requiring zinc also called pbg synthase making you pbg then we have pbg deaminase or hmb synthase making you hmb then we have uh, upg3 synthase or isomerase enzyme making you upg3 that is undergoing decarboxylation to form you cpg3 that's undergoing oxidation by cpg oxidase to form you protoporphyrinogen 9 that's undergoing oxidation by protoporphyrinogen 9 oxidase to form your protoporphyrin 9 that is incorporating the ferrous in the center by heme synthase of ferrochelitase enzyme to make you heme. So these are the 8 steps of heme biosynthesis for detail of these steps you can go to part 1 of this series of heme metabolism and can see my video there. So now directly coming to the various porphyrias. Now we have 8 uh, steps involved and we have 8 porphyrias. None of the steps are spared. Now, the first uh, uh, step is the allosynthase step. Please understand it is not allosynthase 1 enzyme, rather it is allosynthase 2 enzyme of bone marrow which is involved in the porphyria that's called X-linked porphyria. So I have for convenience I have drawn this table where I have uh, enumerated important characteristic of various porphyrias and first column is talking to you about the enzyme step which is affected in that particular porphyria enzyme step which is impact having impact in that porphyria so it is not allosynthase 1 rather allosynthase 2 enzyme which is affected in a porphyria which is called x-linked porphyria you know i have already told you in my previous video that allosynthase 2 gene is found on x link x chromosome so it is called x link protoporphyria we write it xlp like this the second enzyme is ala dehydratase which is removing water from ala molecule to form you pbg this is also also called as pbg synthase the deficiency of this enzyme is rare and it's called ala dehydratase deficiency porphyria next step pbg deaminase or hmb synthase deficiency results in acute intermittent porphyria this is congenital erythropoietic porphyria, deficiency of decarboxylase, results in porphyria cutanea tarda. Then we have hereditary coproporphyria, which is due to deficiency of CPG oxidase, which I previously told you is intermembranous enzyme. Then we have variegated porphyria, variegated porphyria, then we have erythropoietic protoporphyria, EPP is erythropoietic porphyria. Now one thing before we I proceed further and talk about other characteristic of these porphyrias I would like to tell you that this por porphyria that is X-linked protoporphyria is because of overexpression of the enzyme gene and that's resulting in uh, X-linked protoporphyria and remaining all other porphyrias are due to deficiency of enzyme. So the only porphyria which is due to excessive amount of enzyme is X-linked protoporphyria, remaining all other are due to deficiency. When we talk about inheritance, the porphyrias may be, you know, there are eight types of porphyrias, four are autosomal dominant and four are not. So the first uh, thing which you are going to remember is which four are not also autosomal dominant. So in that context, the first one, the X-linked protoporphyria is of course as name implies is X-linked because its gene is found at X chromosome. And the second porphyria that is uh, ala dehydratase deficiency porphyria is autosomal recessive. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria is autosomal recessive. Erythropoietic protoporphyria is autosomal recessive. Remaining all other you can write boldly that they all are autosomal dominant. 
so it is most easy way to remember which one are uh, you know which all are autosomal dominant which are autosomal recessive and which one is x linked so i repeat again four are autosomal dominant and four are not the four which are not are x linked to porphyria the uh, you know uh, ala dehydratase deficiency porphyria congenital erythropoietic porphyria and erythropoietic protoporphyria Though we have autosomal remnant, autosomal recessive variant in PCT, but that is named differently, and that is known as hepatoerythropoietic porphyria. This is autosomal re recessive variant of you can write it variant of porphyria cutanea tarda. By default, you must remember that PCT is autosomal dominant. So, when we talk about PCT, it's very interesting to know that majority of cases, eighty percent of cases, are sporadic. They are not inherited and 20% are inherited where majority are autosomal dominant. But I have told you that if it is autosomal recessive, it is named differently. It is named as hepatic erythropoietic protoporphyria. Right. Now, by default, if anyone asks you what is poor, uh, what is inheritance of PCT, you must go with autosomal dominant. And majority of cases of PCT are sporadic and PCT is the most common porphyria as well. The PCT in adults is the most common porphyria. PCT is most common porphyria, but you, that you must know. Right. You must know this, that PCT is the most common porphyria. Right. Now, after these things, I wanted to highlight just PCT, but because of thickness of pen, this highlighting CP as well, so that must not go wrong. So, PCT is the most common porphyria, which I have told you. Now, coming to hepatic or erythropoietic. What is the mean, meaning of hepatic porphyria or erythropoietic porphyria? First of all, you must know that. Hepatic porphyria means the porphyrias where the hepatic enzymes are deficient. It's very simple to understand. And erythropoietic porphyria means where the bone marrow enzymes are deficient. When we uh, see which one is uh, erythropoietic, which one is hepatic, you must know that majority of the porphyrias are hepatic except three which are erythropoietic. You can even guess that this congenital erythropoietic porphyria because name itself is having erythropoietic in it. This is, this is, you know, erythropoietic porphyria. Similarly, the first one that is ala synthase 2 overexpression that is X-linked protoporphyria is erythropoietic. And the last one, the erythropoietic name itself is telling you that it's erythropoietic porphyria, erythropoietic porphyria. I think I, I must write in this table, I'm sorry. So the first porphyria is erythropoietic. The last porphyria is also erythropoietic. The congenital erythropoietic porphyria is also erythropoietic. So now it is clear that three are erythropoietic, remaining five are hepatic. So you can boldly write hepatic. Hepatic. Here the enzymes are deficient in liver cell, hepatic, hepatic porphyria, hepatic porphyria, and hepatic porphyria. Right. Hepatic porphyria. So only three are erythropoietic, and I've told you their names, right? Now coming to manifestation. When you're talking about porphyria, the presentation may be neurovisceral or maybe cutaneous or uh, there are certain porphyrias where both the manifestations are there, cutaneous as well as neurovisceral manifestation. When I talked about neurovisceral manifestation, the, you know, the organ involvement, the abdominal pain, the neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, neuropsychiatric features, they all are there. The proximal, um, uh, you know, muscles are involved, uh, motor or uh, motor nerves are involved, sensory nerves are also involved, but this is seen much later. When we talk about cutaneous manifestation, we have a blistering and non-blistering type of lesions. So, uh, now coming to uh, the point where I discuss you, that which all porphyrias are having mixed features. So there are HCP and VP you have seen, they have both neurovisceral, you can write it here, HCP and VP, they have neurovisceral 
as well as cutaneous manifestation hcp and bp you write down neurovisceral and cutaneous manifestation they have mixed presentation and when i talk to you about pure neurovisceral manifestation we have acute intermittent porphyria we have ala dehydrotase deficiency poro proto ala de ala dehydrotase deficiency porphyria they have purely neurovisceral manifestation they don't have absolutely any cutaneous manifestation remaining all other will have cutaneous manifestation so you see that majority will have cutaneous manifestation and aip and adp will have pure neurovisceral manifestation hcp and vp will have mixed manifestation so i highlight these two hcp and vp which are having mixed manifestation and i i highlight these two as well the neurovisceral manifestation purely neurovisceral manifestation in aip and adp when we talk about cutaneous manifestation we have blistering lesion and we have non blistering lesions when i talk to you about the excelling protoporphyria the non blistering lesions are seen and erythropoietic protoporphyria also non blistering lesions so the first and last are having just the swelling and inflammation redness tenderness on the sun exposed area i show you a picture shortly that's a non blistering skin lesions and remaining all other cutaneous porphyrias are having the blistering skin lesions where blisters are formed they burst they they curse they burst they make the hyperpigmented patches on the uh, sun exposed areas so all are having blistering skin lesions and when i as i have already told you when we are talking about neurovisceral manifestation the abdominal pain is the most important symptom with which the patient is presenting and uh, the muscle involvement may be there in the upper limb and proximal muscle motor path motor involvement may be there the weakness in the upper limb may also be a presenting feature so this is in brief the various aspect of porphyria their names their inheritance which organ is involved and how they present now i show you certain pictures which are uh, denoting you how the blistering and non blistering skin lesions are there but before that yeah this is non blistering photosensitivity non blistering photosensitivity skin lesion cutaneous manifestation you can see the redness swelling inflammation on the dorsum sun exposed hands right and it's seen in excelling protoporphyria and erythropoietic protoporphyria as i've told you and blistering photosensitivity is the a major cutaneous manifestation in majority of the porphyria that's congenital erythropoietic porphyria protoporphyria cutanea tarda hcp and bp you have this kind of uh, blistering skin photosensitivity where blisters are formed and when they burst they leave certain hyperpigmented patches on the sun exposed area now this is a picture which is talking to you about the port wine color of the urine which is very characteristic finding in a uh, porphyria and uh, this is the fresh urine bachcho this is the fresh urine but after standing for say for example 24 or 48 hours it's becoming dark and this is because of various porphyrinogens which are present it's a very characteristic finding and that's called port wine uh, urine in porphyria and this urine if it is uh, uh, you know acidified with hcl and uh, checked in the spectrophotometer where various wavelength light is passed through it then what happens it shows a sorate band this is port wine color we say no so i just want to show you how the port wine color is actually now sorate band is what uh, sorate band is a peak absorption peak absorption at 405 nanometer wavelength in the urine of a patient having porphyria so porphyria patient uh, will have porphyrinogens in the urine which under acidic condition will show you peak absorption at 405 nanometer and uh, this is being checked in spectrophotometer this is called sorate band this is called sorate band and uh, that's a very characteristic finding in all porphyrias all porphyrinogens they show the peak absorption at 405 nanometer it's exactly 405 nanometer not 400 nanometer as stated in various so resources so you must know it is 405 nanometer which is showing the peak absorption now this is one um, brownish 
pigmentation of the teeth and this fluorescence of the teeth under ultraviolet light can be seen. This is called erythrodontia. This terminology is erythrodontia, the fluorescence, red fluorescence of the teeth. And it's a characteristic finding in congenital erythropoietic porphyria where porphyrin, porphyrin pigments are getting deposited in teeth and when exposed to ultraviolet light, they give this kind of fluorescence. That's called erythrodontia. So thank you very much, guys. And this was the, you know, brief video which was talking about the core aspect of various porphyrias. It's a very important set of disorder. And you see, God has not spared any single step in the heme biosynthesis. Everything is, uh, you know, under attack, uh, under, you know, crisis. And uh, except one, all are deficient in various porphyrias. The one which is not deficient, rather it is excessive, is allosynthase 2. One more thing I would like to tell you here that this ala dehydrogase as we have seen is a purely neurological porphyria and it's called ADP. You must know that lead is having uh, you know impact on this enzyme and this results in accumulation of ala and a porphyria which is acquired it's called plumbo porphyria. So all the porphyrias which I have discussed in that table are inherited porphyria. The one which is acquired is plumbo porphyria which is again purely neurological pure neurovisceral manifestation is seen in lead poisoning and um, this is neurovisceral porphyria. where the main presenting feature will be abdominal pain, right? So this is called plumbo porphyria and that's the only porphyria which is acquired. The another step where lead affects the heme biosynthesis, as I've told you in my previous video, is the ferrochilitase that results in lead-induced anemia. So thank you very much.